Alright, so there hasn't been a updated tutorial for HP2 any percent, so I figured I'd make one with the uh, new strats. And I'll be covering basically all the easy strats and all the hard strats that I think you should know to be able to run this game. If you don't want to do the hard strats, then just use the easy alternatives and you're fine. I do suggest trying the harder, run harder ones though, just to see if you'll, uh, uh, you feel you can do some of them at least. It's always worth giving a shot before uh, dismissing them. If not, then just like add them into your run later on. Uh, so, I will not be covering brightness boost in detail, nor will I cover double inputs in detail, and I will not show how to set up debug mode because I have shown all of those in separate tutorials and I'll link them in the description below. So, starting right in, uh, the part here is not part of the run. The run starts when I skip this cutscene. So, as soon as you skip the cutscene, your timer will start. That means you can go into the settings and do whatever you want here until, um, or before the run. Uh, so I do suggest going into your settings and changing texture detail to low. Because it'll make boosting and some other things slightly faster and it's worth it overall. Nothing else needs to be changed though. Other than that, you need to just go to... Like, you only need to change the texture de de detail once. After that, it's fine. It'll be set like that forever. Uh, but every run, you should go in here and just pu put your cursor over the eye like this. So when you pause next time, you can just immediately hit it and you'll be in the options. So it'd be like that, instead of having to move the cursor to end. So yeah, the f uh, run starts on the first cutscene skip, as I said. During the cutscene skips, you want to hold double double left and one right. Or double left and one back, rather. So you go like this. And then during the movement like that, you want to jump. So you land onto the root. And then turn and look towards the left. And then hold double, double forward inputs. So like that. Ideally about this angle is good. And then you can't, the reason you go like this and then over to the door is because if I go from this point straight to the door, the root is going to instantly attack, which means I can't pass it on the first cycle. If, however, I go down to about this corner right here, where I'm pointing, and then move from here over to the door, it'll attack the late, so I can just jump past it and get past it on the first cycle. So it looked look like this, um, it looked like this, uh, at normal speed. Not like that, because I got greedy and tried to cut the corner too much. But yeah, something along these lines. And you have to jump to get past it or else it most likely will hit you. It cannot hit you while you're jumping though. So yeah, remember to hold cuts and skip the entire run, and then... Yeah, after this cutscene, you want to hold left, and there's two ways to do this. The first way is to just to climb the ledge here. So you want shoot to the, shoot the gargoyle as you climb the first ledge, walk as far forward as you can, and then climb the second ledge. But you don't want that climbing animation. You need to jump into the ledge uh, for these climbs, because you want that climbing animation, not not this one, but this one. The short one. So basically it'll look like this. Essentially. That's the easy way. The hard way is doing a boost up the first ledge, which is like, uh, like that, essentially. Where you... Um, You do something called an insta boost, where as you jump into the ledge, uh, you need to pause and hit F1 at the same time, so you load as soon as you hit the menu. That means you don't lose any time from the actual uh, pause, you only lose time from the climb, which you have to do anyways. So shoot the gargoyle as you jump, pause and load at the same time, and then boost. Like that. And then um, 
you'll get up there. The boost only saves half a second, so if you don't feel comfortable doing it, then feel free not to. Then when you get to this cutscene skip, you want to switch your inputs to double left, or double right and double forward, and then kind of turn like that after the cutscene. You want to go like this, and then just let go of double right. Then this is the first major boost of the run, and basically it's, if you do the easy version, all you do is you run around the luggage like this. Just walk into it and get a uh, medium ledge grab. Pause. Uh, go into your options, F1. And then just boost a few times and you'll get onto the ledge like this. So it's very, very simple, very easy. If you take damage, that's fine. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can get that back later. But try not to take damage because that's the ideal thing. The harder way to do this, uh, which saves about a second, little less than a second, is to shoot the luggage as you climb it, which is sort of difficult to do. You need to kind of run around it and then shoot it at an awkward angle like that, like, yeah, like that, and then just boost off that. And as you can see, I landed there before and now I landed about here. Which, uh, might not seem like significant time save, but it is. Uh, and then, basically to do this, you wanna go like this. And then shoot it, and then climb. It's, it takes quite a bit of, uh, of getting used to, to be able to do it consistently. But yeah, after you get on there, regardless of the method you use, you just run to the right, all the way over to this structure, and then drop down in the hole. And there'll be a loading zone for the next area. Like there. Then here, you simply follow Ron. There's not much to this. After the cutscene, just let go forward and hit double right instead. And then when you fall, turn and hit double forward again, and then just run to the door. <laughs> there are a few sections like this where you just kind of follow people and they aren't too exciting, but... Uh, they're not too bad either. <laughs> so going up the stairs here, Ron is gonna kind of spaz out and uh, act weirdly. And I don't know why, but just kind of ignore them and try to avoid them. And eventually you'll get into the cutscene skip. Here again, just follow Ron. Try to beat him through this corner, like push him into the wall. So he doesn't push you essentially, it's a tiny bit of a time save. Also, you want to play this game at 120 FPS. I didn't set it before because I've been playing HP1. Alright, so this is another pretty big boost. Basically, after the cutscene, just hold, like, uh, turn during the cutscene skip and hold double right and double forward until you get your bearings and then just hold forward. And then you want to run up the stairs and then at about the middle stairs, like this, or step like that. Uh, you want to jump. And you want to try to hit about the middle of this platform as well, and that'll result in a medium ledge grab, which is what you want. Like that. And then just pause immediately, go to your options, F1, and then mash a few times. About six or seven times, and you'll get up to the top here. From down there, up here. And then just run past here. And you'll be in class. So I'll do that once more. Just go to the middle of the top, uh, staircase, jump to about the middle of the platform, pause, and then just boost a few times. It takes it takes time getting used to um, not boosting too high or too low, but you get used to it pretty fast. And also worth noting, it does not matter if you take damage here either, as long as you do not die, so yeah. Then just run to class. Spell learning in this game is kind of annoying and slow, 
All you have to do is this dumb rhythm game thing, and there's no really getting around it. The fun and exciting thing is that the game can randomly decide to do an input during these, and if it does, your next arrow will fail, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, if you fail this and you don't know why it failed, it most likely was just the game screwing you. But yeah, just kind of do the arrows like this. It's slightly faster, you can fail them, but it's slightly faster to just do them, uh, in any percent at least. By about 5 seconds on this one, about 14 on Scourge, 1 second on Defendo, and then like 18 seconds faster on Spongify. So just do them all, except maybe Defendo if you're feeling lazy. So yeah, there's 3 rounds, and they get progressively harder, and yeah, it's... Uh, well done, Harry. You've advanced to the next round. Uh, yeah, it's just um, round three. Begin. This. There's nothing to that. Oh, I don't have my thing. You can also speed up the up the game if you're in debug to make this a lot faster and easier. All right, Harry. I believe. So. When you enter this part, I'm gonna have to set it back up to create a like, practice save state. Okay, so now, when you enter this area, you wanna hold cut and skip, uh, and you wanna hold double back and one right, like that. Until the cut and skip in here happens. You'll see it walks di diagonally until the cut and skip. After that, let go of your right button and keep holding double back and cut and skip. So like this. That will set up your angle. So now all you need to do is time your jump and your right input. Essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to help or get in that door right there before it closes. So, um, I, I try to listen to the sound of the door, and there's like two planks that closes. Right as you start hearing the, um, uh, there's like sort of two sounds. Once you start hearing the second one, jump, and then hold, hold, uh, right, and you should make it into the door. Like right about here. This is one of the harder tricks in the run, and it takes a lot of getting used to. If you go, if you go too early on the jump, what'll happen is sort of this. You'll you'll not make it, and you'll just be in this corner here. If you go too late, however, what'll happen is kind of this. I I didn't go late. Actually, the same thing. Uh, you can also make it past... Okay, so early. Early goes past the uh, the wall. My bad. Uh, late makes you go into the corner here. Early means you kind of hug this wall. And you don't get into the door frame at all. If you almost make it... Uh, you'll get stuck in the planks. And here it'll make this weird ass noise forever. It'll... Like that, yeah. That means you almost made it, so if you get that, then... Keep doing what you were doing, but like, alter it slightly. Of course, now I can't do it. <sighs> Alright. So yeah, that's one of the harder tricks in the run, and it, um takes a lot of practice, and I don't think anyone's really quite consistent at it. But yeah, after that, you just go out and meet this girl and then follow her to the room of uh, beans. The bean bonus room. And the way this works, this is basically RNG. So when you run in here, you want to look at the numbers on the wall. Well, you don't have to, but if you want to know your RNG, you, you do that. So I have, or Gryffindor rather, has 48 points currently, Slytherin has 42 points, 
that means I have bad RNG. And the way it works is, if if Gryffindor has five or less points and more than Slytherin, so if I have if I had 47 or less points and Slytherin had 42 points, I would have gotten good RNG. But if I have six or more points more than Slytherin, I get bad RNG, and that's about 10 seconds slower. So yeah, I got bad RNG right there. Basically, that means you have to stay in this room for 10 seconds longer. There's nothing really in here. It's pretty... You don't really have to do anything here in any percent. You can get frogs from this chest though. And this chest. Like that. Hi Froggy. Um, so yeah, if you're low on health, open those to maybe get a frog. So after that, just skip the cutscene and follow... Uh, follow this guy to the pitch. Quidditch pitch. And then you're gonna learn some Quidditch, which is extremely simple in this game, and basically an auto-scroller, unfortunately. All right, you All they need to worry about for the first part here is don't hit anything and don't get hit by a, um, a bludger, because that loses a few seconds each time. But yeah, just kind of wait until the bar fills up, and when it does, you want to hit your right and left mouse button to catch the snitch. Like so. The next part is a tiny bit more complicated, but not really. All you need to do is, again, avoid stuff until a certain point, but there will be a Seeker that comes in here. A rival Seeker. And you just want to avoid her until you get to about the halfway point here. I usually do it until the ring's here, and then knock the shit out of her with my mouse buttons. And then she'll be beaten, and I can catch the snitch, much like in the first part. You cannot catch the snitch while she's still there, and if you beat her too early, she'll respawn, and you have to beat her again, which is slow. So yeah, that's um, that's Quidditch. Uh, you will not see that again in any percent, luckily. So then just follow Hermione until potions, and... Yeah, this, this part of the run is very... Simple, very easy, there's nothing really to it. The real meat of the run starts after Scourge. So yeah, you get into class here. Immediately as you get in here, you want to shoot the chest, and then stand about here, and you'll pick up the ingredients like that. Now, walk up to the cauldron. You see how Snape started talking there? If you hit this cauldron before he starts talking, you soft lock. So do not do that. So yeah, wait, wait until he starts talking, run into the cauldron, wait a tiny bit before skipping the cutscene, and then skip the cutscene. You should get your potion, you should not soft lock. And then, again, just follow Hermione. There's a tiny speed strat in the next room, which I do suggest people doing, but I know some people don't, because they find it annoying. And it's basically, after this cutscene, you want to kind of run up here and jump on the railing like that. And the reason you want to do that is because then you can just um, keep running and then jumping onto the next platform immediately without having to wait like so. And then do the same thing here. You do have to wait a tiny bit there, but not a lot. So yeah, like that. I um, Alternatively, what you can do is just take the stairs normally, just do this. And then wait a little bit, jump on, make sure you don't ledge crab. And then jump on and make sure you don't ledge crab. I do suggest trying the uh, rail strats though, because they're pretty swag and pretty easy to be honest. And just go in here, you get another spell learning. Uh, again, you can get a ghost input, which is the game doing a random input failing you. And it hurts like hell when it happens, but yeah, just it's something you just have to accept if you want to run this game, honestly. Ideally, you want to do these arrows though, but I don't feel like it, and or right now, and I can speed up the game, so yeah. Ha. Then Scourge is pretty, pretty simple. This is Scourge. Um, 
And then you skip Scourge by jumping on the wall here. So yeah, when you get into this room, there's a couple of setups you can do. I like to do this one, where you just walk into about this point, aim at around the corner on the floor there, like the corner of the metal thing. Walk backwards, double forwards, and then jump as soon as you hit the wall, like so. Uh, give me a second. Like that, and then you'll land onto the wall. And this is called a wall walk, I can walk on this wall. And essentially what you can do from that is... Uh, you can ju jump onto the next part. And all you need to do after landing on there, once you've confirmed that you're up there, is keep holding forward the entire time jump and then immediately hit left like that and then you land onto here and from here you just drop down and land on the final star of the challenge and that's the end of the challenge so it's it takes effort or uh, takes a bit of practice but it's a very easy trick once you get used to it can screw you up in runs though but really doesn't and then yeah just jump down and finish the challenge then you follow this guy again, a lot of following people in between sections, but yeah, makes it easier to start off the run, honestly, because you'll always know where to go, pretty much. So yeah, this time you will not go to the bean bonus room, though you will never go there more than once in an any percent run. <laughs> then just walk all the way to the end of this hole, and... Uh... Remember to shoot this chest, it does absolutely nothing for your speedrun, but... Habits. So yeah, when you run in here, just hit that door immediately. There is a hard boost here that you can do, which is basically... Go to the edge of this, turn around, jump back, and then go back into a ledge trap. Make sure it's a small ledge trap like that. And then pause immediately. So, basically like this. Not like that. You can do it with that ledge grab as well. A long ledge grab will work, medium will not. So that that is going to work. So then just go into this option menu. Make sure you're ready to boost, because you need to boost really fast for this one. And then F1 and brightness boost. Uh, I am not doing it fast enough. There we go. If you do it fast enough, you'll boost kind of backwards and then back up. And then you'll clear the ceiling and land on this wall. And again, this is another wall walk. So you can walk on this wall. So you want to kind of just run. You can either jump from here onto the candle. Uh, I never like that, but yeah, you can do that. What I like to do though, which is in my opinion easier and it's faster. Uh, that was a medium ledge crab, it would not have worked. What I do is basically this, I just jump straight there, and I find it easier, because there's less to think about. If you don't want to do those strats though, you can just hit that switch, hit that switch, and then hit this gargoyle. And then... The gargoyle does not needed, but it makes the next room a little easier. Then just jump on here and then jump to the stairs. And then just run down. If you don't hit the gargoyle or do the boost strat, uh, you'll just have to kind of... Walk in the middle here, and you'll uh, clear all the holes, essentially. And when you get to this part, just shoot this thing and then drop down. Make sure, though... Oh, let me get there again. Nice. I'm just gonna cheat to get there. So this is how the room is done if you don't have the Lumo statue. You just kind of walk in the middle. Alright, so... This part right here... Make sure when you drop down, you don't land on the railing like that, because you get stuck. There's a weird collision on the uh, in the air there, and it's weird. Sometimes you'll get unstuck, like I just did there, but not all the time, so don't risk it. So yeah, just shoot this as soon as you get in there, and then drop down. Stand kind of back, and then try to clear it as it goes up, and then go to the next room. Now these snails and pretty much all monsters in this game are on cycles. And if you do boost strats and you um, 
like do boost rats optimally this guy right here will go in by himself into the trap after the snails are done the uh traps get up and basically you just shoot them like that and then you shoot this guy towards the cage three times like so and then you go to this side shoot this guy four times then you want to move like this kind of hit this guy as you're moving sometimes he'll be like this so you, if you hit him two times like this he'll get caught if you see that then just kind of wait um like wait about here and then shoot him once more and then boom it'll go in but yeah my point is just try to shoot him as much or while moving as much as possible at the same time and then kind of shoot this guy twice and the door will open and you can go to the next room now this room the casual strat is just shoot all the scourges the things will come out and he kind of may slowly make your way down but you can do you can get down here by a simple jump so just kind of run off the ledge and hit this part here like like this uh not like that like this no falling down is hard like that so just kind of front out here and then fall down you land on the stairs or these stairs which means you won't take damage if you land here you'll take damage but it's fine Then this room is sort of similar to the one upstairs. The only difference is you can pause cast during this. Which is just pausing it right after casting so you don't have to wait for the timer of the cast. You want to be as close to the second snail as possible when hitting it in, but it's not too important. You can also pause cast on the snails and crabs upstairs, but... It's hard to move properly while doing it. So yeah. Then this part, just target this, shoot it, and then hit the save point. Save point is only for for safety, really, and you don't really lose time because you have to wait for the stairs to drop down anyways. Then this room. There is a wall walk here, and it is white annoying and scary at first but it's not too bad once you get used to it all you have to do is kind of have a very slight angle into the wall and then you want to kind of while jumping off or before it doesn't matter you want to hold right into the wall like so and then like go before you land which um, and then just hit, keep holding forward the entire time so like that if you um, if you don't get it, you'll just fall down in the pit and die. And go back to the safety save right before. So again, just run here. Go to the wall. Very slight angle, like this. Hold forward, right into the wall, and then let go of right, and you'll land on here. Then when you land, you want to just keep- or hold forward the entire time. Jump, get on this wall, and then when you get about it here, jump and hold left. Like so. And then just jump over here. So one more time, it's just a uh, very straight angle, fall down, land on the wall, and then just jump past the things and you'll be fine. This room, just hit the switch and then wait for the things to open. Nothing really speedy about this room. The next room, however, has a speed strat. You're supposed to make these things in a middle turn, but what you can do is you can either uh, dang, save states are hurt. You can either do jump on the thing in the middle, which I'll show off first, or you can jump on a wall and walk on the wall a little bit, which isn't too hard and most people should do it, but I know some people don't like it. So yeah, the easy strat is to jump on the thing in the middle here. Get onto this paddle and then jump from the paddle onto the this part here. The slightly harder method, but not really difficult in my opinion, is to have like come into this room, have an angle about like this, like into the wall. Jump out, hold right left until you hit the wall and then let go of left. So just um 
Like that, you land on the wall and then just jump and hold right and you land on here, which is slightly faster than going on the middle. Then here, when you get to the next room, all you have to do is jump onto this little ledge. There's no wall walk here, there's just a little ledge. Then walk through the pillar and the wall here. Keep walking along the ledge and then jump onto this platform. Now in this room you want to kind of be as much to this side as possible and then be straight onto or facing the paddle in the middle and then jump as late as possible. You can jump a lot later than you think here. And then uh, you land here and then just jump over the scourge. Pretty simple stuff. Hard and scary at first but pretty simple. So when done fast, that will look like um, like this, essentially. Like that. The next room is a simple boost. There's two different boosts you can do here. The fast one is this. You just go over here, go all the way to the wall and jump. You'll get a long ledge crab. Pause as soon as you can and then do about three or four boosts and you'll land boost right onto this little thing that sticks out. If you don't like that boost though, you can do you can jump into the ledge, get a medium ledge grab, and then just boost all the way up, mash boosts until you land about you'll land on this part, essentially, and then just run over here. Jump late there to avoid a ledge crab. If you get a small ledge crab, that's fine as well. This next room is mostly about avoiding pixel circles, or avoiding the pixies, which will be on cycles, but it's fine. Once you get used to them, they're not too scary. Go away. So basically in this room, all you need to do is run over to this point right here. Don't run down onto the plank, just jump from the rocky part, and then land on the middle or um, third part of this, and then jump onto the next. So like this. Well, without the ledge crab, but you get my point. Then run around this, you'll fall down in the trap, shoot that scourge and then jump over the gap. Right here you want to stop holding forward, then jump and then hold forward again to get a small ledge crab instead of a medium ledge crab. Here you want to do another boost, you can either climb up like this. Or you can do another boost using a uh, insta load, like, um, which is hitting escape and F1 at the same time, which is a significant bit faster than um, climbing. Then just grab this horn off the table and you're done with bike horn, which is one of the harder sections in the run. Then there's no guy to tell you where to go right now, but just exit the classroom like this and. Here, you'll get another guy showing you where to go. But if you don't feel like waiting for him, you can just go to the Great Hall, which is where the dueling take place, takes place. And there's again two strats you can do for dueling. One is super easy, one is pretty easy and saves a little bit of time. Okay, so... Uh, I fucked up my save states, but essentially what you want to do is go to this part, charge up a spell fully, and then wait for him to get to you and then charge up another spell. You want to go to this part, charge or cast a spell here, and then go to this part and cast another spell here, and he'll die. You, you can also do a super free stat strat, which is... Um, That's essentially how you want to do it, but just alternate sides. But yeah, the easy way is just go, go to the yellow spell. You switch spells with uh, right mouse click and space, I think, by default. Go to the yellow space, cast it, and immediately pause, and then unpause, and then do nothing. And you'll block any attack he throws at you. So, choose which method you want to do. <clears throat> Hello, Harry. 
Then here again, just follow Ron. Simple and standard procedure, or whatever. <laughs> just, um... Getting to the Findo now. Again, you want to probably do the spell learning here. It saves about a second to do it over not doing it, but I'm gonna speed up the game and then just not do it. Okay, so when you get into the Findo, you'll be facing like this and just walk left and turn and you'll uh, like turn to the right. You can either just shoot this thing and then run through the doorway, or you can do jump onto this thing and then through the window, which is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit faster. And then just go into this area here. Shoot the snail because it's annoying as all hell and you don't want him to be alive. Then now you want to do a boost up into the window there, or doorway or whatever. So essentially, you can't climb this ledge unless you jump into it. So right before you hit the ledge, you want to jump. So you get a climb like that. And then at the very... If you want to do the fastest strats, at the very end of the climb, you want to just pause like that. F1 and then wait until the load is done and then boost. Like that. And then you'll... That mean... Or will always put you like this. To where you're stuck on the wall. Then from here, what you want to do is you want to jump, and a little after you jump, you want to hit forward so you get a medium ledge grab. Then wait until his left leg is on the ledge like it is now. Go into boosting, uh, F1, start boosting, and then immediately after you get your f as far as you want in the boost, uh, it takes a bit of practice to get used to that. You want to unpause and then immediately hold a right, double right preferably. And what that does is it's it you goes there's a trigger for a snail here to appear and you basically boost over that snail and you can skip that snail. It saves them a tiny bit of time, like a few seconds. If you don't want to do that though, and I don't suggest people doing it at first, like when they first start out, just go into the ledge grab, pause at any time, boost a few times, and you'll be in the doorway. Then just trigger the snail and wait here for him to attack you. It is a lot simpler and, uh, yeah. Then just hit him into the, into the trap and continue on. There's two snails here. You want to kind of walk to this point, shoot the snail twice with pause casting, then shoot this one and then three times with pause casting, like that. And then just run and you'll be at the end of the challenge. Right after the Ron cutscene, essentially turn 180 almost, because you're facing the completely wrong way. But yeah, then just follow Ron, you're going to Boomslang, which is past Defendo. Try to shoot this thing before the cutscene, or else you won't really have time to hit it. So yeah, right as you start in here, what you want to do immediately as you start is just run. Shoot this thing and run. And then just either run past these guys or hit their heads. I like to hit their heads to be safe, but it doesn't really matter. And there's two ways to... Um, two ways to do this boost. There's either this corner, run into this corner and do a climb. And then right after starting the climb, go in here, F1, and then mash both your arrow keys and your mouse on brightness bar, and you'll boost up here, onto the roof. The easier way is to go all the way in the corner here, and then do a ledge climb here, and then again do the same thing, mouse and keyboard, and you'll land up here. Both are pretty good, corner is a tiny bit faster, 
not a big deal though. Uh, so yeah, once you're up here, go to this ledge, which is... You land with about an angle like this. Uh, at about this spot, and then just run forward and you'll get to this ledge here. And you can't jump up this ledge, but you can clip up it. So what you want to do is run with almost a 45 degree angle into the wall like this. Then jump, spell cast, and turn your camera to the left, or towards the wall rather. So run against it a little bit, then jump, and then you'll, like, clip up if you turn the camera. Remember to mash your spell button, it makes it a tiny bit easier. Like that. And then just run straight forward, go in between these two dragons, fall down in a hole, pick up the boom slang on the table, and you're done with boom slang. Then again, follow this guy and... We're soon coming up to a pretty, pretty difficult trick again. But it is not too bad once you understand it. And I'll try to explain it as best as I can, but um, it does take a little bit of playing around with. But yeah, just kind of go where I'm going right now and you'll eventually come across the grand staircase again. And this time, there is supposed to be a cutscene on that platform with Nick, but you want to skip that cutscene. So what you want to do is, you can either... You can get on the railing in two ways. Either do what you did earlier, and jump on it like this. Which is the risky way. Or you can get on it by just walking, a, or like slightly going in like this. And then jumping on it. And then when you're on it, you want to go up pretty much as far as you can, like this. And then you want to use the momentum of the staircase to boost you forward. So jump... ...pretty much right before the staircase starts turning. And then uh, you don't want to jump like this, because you'll trigger the cutscene. You want to jump kind of out and then strafe back in. So... Kind of jump straight out and then strafe back into the staircase like that. Double input for strafing and forward here makes it a lot easier. And yeah, it takes it takes practice to get past this ledge or a cutscene skip, but it is um, it is worth learning because it saves a couple of minutes. So yeah, once you do that, just go in to the bathroom. I'll do it once more. Just wait until the highest point before it starts turning, right basically before it connects with the next part. And you'll be able to have enough speed to boost past the uh, platform that Nick is on. Then just jump onto the next platform and go into the bathroom. And you'll be taken to the dungeons, which is where we want to be next. So here, just run straight forward until you get a cutscene, and then go to the right, uh, the entrance to the right here. Just run up the stairs and into the loading zone. This is Goyle, the Goyle area, or whatever. The level is called Goyle. And all you need to do in the first room is run up these circle, circular stairs. And then into the next room. Now here, there's you can do the casual way, which is going through here, oops, without the ledge crab, of course, and like that, and then that's basically how you do that room casually. If you want to go fast, though, what you want to do is run over to the last entrance like this, hit this thing, hit the web as you're moving, and then kind of go onto this plank right here, like. And this pillar is blocking you, but you can, if you jump out like this and then strafe back in. So jump, let go forward and hit straight right. And don't hit the pillar, because that slows your momentum and I'm bad. So like, like that. You'll, uh, you'll get a ledge climb. If you, like once you get better at it, ah, bad. Once you get better at it, you can skip the ledge climb like that. 
it's not always gonna happen, but it's it's pretty consistent. And obviously, ledge climb is uh, slow, so don't do that if you don't have to. So yeah, just jump down here. You will not take full damage in this room for whatever reason. I I don't know why. Definitely grab this save book right here, uh, at least at the beginning, because the next room here has a boost that is kind of difficult. When you come into the room, you want to climb not this first phase like this, but you want to climb this um, diagonal side. So go climb it and then pause immediately. Just run into it and pause immediately. Go to your options menu, F1, and then both mouse and keyboard until you're onto this roof, which as you can see is quite a high boost. It takes, uh, takes some use to getting or time getting used to the boost height. If you go too high though, you'll hit an invisible ceiling. But that ceiling is not high enough to save you, so you will die. And if you go too low, basically you just won't make it. You'll probably die, if not you'll just land here and you'll be here, which is not ideal. So yeah, try to get a good a feel for how many boosts you need to do. Then just run forward, jump down onto the ceiling, and then onto the grass. The ceiling is just not to take full damage. I like to kill that guy because fuck that guy. Alright. Uh, when you get around here, just uh, well, hit that thing. And then when you get past here, there is this trap door that'll fall down. And you can just fall down and then beat this crab. You just have to hit it four times and it'll go down. Like that. But the faster way to do this is doing another wall walk, which looks like this. And the way you do that is, when you come around this corner, kind of try to line yourself up so you have a slight angle into the wall like this. Walk forward with single input, do not double input for this, and then hit single input into the wall like that so you hug the wall a little bit. And then after a little bit, jump and keep holding both forward and left. And then after jumping for a little bit, you wanna um, you wanna let go of left, so like like that, and you should land if you have a good angle and you did the um, strafing into the wall. Then just walk forward. You wanna have you can have like a very slight angle. I think this angle will work. Ah, maybe not. But yeah, you'll get a feel for the angle. It's kind of precise, but it's pretty easy as well. Just a slight angle into the wall. Like so. That one is pretty difficult, but it is worth getting going for, even if you're not going for a super good time, because it is free time save if you get it. Then just go through the room, kill the pixie. This pixie will be on a cycle. Well, every pixie is on a cycle, but that pixie specifically you'll usually kill it in the same spot every time because you'll be going about the same speed every time. So you'll get used to that pixie very fast. But yeah, shoot the Scourge, run around, don't shoot that one because you don't need to. Shoot this next one, then just shoot all of the Scourges as you go. And continue through, hit these webs, you want to climb this uh, ball of hay or whatever. And then run forward. This part right here has a climb or a boost, which you need to boost a little into the animation. So don't start there, start like there, and then just boost a few times and you'll land in the doorway. If you boost too early, what'll happen is basically this. You'll boost backwards and then forwards, so you'll get stuck on the little ceiling thing there. So just kind of... Uh, Boost a little late and you'll get into the doorway. Then go to the left side of this room. Alright, so here's another semi-difficult trick once or when you start, but it's not too bad when you get used to it. Uh, like, you learn it pretty fast, I mean. Basically, climb this thing at about where the rope is. Like so. Then while you climb, you want to turn with an angle about like this. A slight angle into the wall, essentially, again. Then just hold forward and you'll run off, and then like hit right, 
uh, hits right into the wall. Um, so you hit the wall before you land, and then let go of right before you land. If you get stuck like this, uh, you want to just jump. Let me try to get that again. Let's... Um... Okay, if you get stuck like this, just jump, hit left, or hit, hold forward, jump, hit left, and then hit right, like that, and you'll land on the next part. Then run to the end of the wall and then jump onto this uh, this wall here. So again, climb the rope, turn to get a semi-angle into the wall, hit right until you hit the wall, let go of right, and you should get it. Keep holding forward the entire time. And then just proceed into the barn, and you're done with Goyle. So now, for some reason, they make you actually run in here and then run back out, which is kind of stupid, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, you just run to the bathroom, you'll get turned to Goyle, and then you run back to the Grand Staircase as Goyle. Hold left, or hold right out of that cutscene. It's worth noting, if you hit cauldrons, if you have full health, it will always give beans. If you have anything below full health though, it can give a frog, so it, it's worth hitting if you have lo less than full health. Alright, so there's a slight trick here in the next room to save some health, and I pretty much always do it because I don't like getting frogs. And basically, all you do is you run up, and staircases are weird, like, I can stand, you can run in the air. For some reason, they have a hitbox like this, quite far out. So just run quite far out, and then jump at this wall, like that. Then turn with about a um, 45 degree angle like that. And then hold right into the wall, and let go before you land. Like so, and you land on the wall, and that will negate full damage. There's a higher wall walk you can get here, which is... This one, and you do not want this one, so... Hold right until you're past that point, and then let go of right. And you will never get that, so just hold right until here, and then let go. And you land on this part of the wall. And then just jump down and go through the door. Then just kind of follow where I'm going, because uh, we're going back to the dungeons. <gasps> Alright, so here is another cutscene. Just skip it and proceed. The next cutscene, however, is not skippable, and you have to watch it. Pure blood. Alright, so... There's not anything really difficult in um, the ring common room, but there's one trick that's pretty difficult. The rest is easy though. This thing here, you can just run onto it like that and then to the side. But for some reason that doesn't always work. So what I like to do that always works pretty much is run to the right side of it. Then kind of tap left and then tap right and you'll always trigger it. Then after you get through here, there's a small time saver you can do. You can hit this thing and then immediately target the same target and then try to aim it down a little. And then you'll um, you'll be able to hit the bottom target as fast as possible, like so. And just turn around and walk into the next room. The rope, the ropes here are kind of dumb though. So when you go go into this room, sometimes the target will be like this for whatever reason. I don't understand why it's stuck like that. So, we're, just try to aim at like the, the, like right there basically where the rope is like connected to the thing and that usually works pretty easy. And then hit that one and then just wait here until the door opens and proceed. 
Then just quickly hit the statues. You have to hit the heads of the statues. Uh, the bodies will not work. For this one, you just run onto it, and then to the left, it's not as precise as the other one. And now here is the actual hard trick of this part. Um, I'll try to go over it, uh, the hard method, and then I'll show you an easy method uh, you can do as well, if you don't like the hard method. So, um, I'll slow it down so you can see what's going on. Basically, you want to run like this, jump, always spell cast during these jumps because it makes your jumps less, then trigger the thing as far at the edge as possible, land on the bridge railing like this. And then... Yeah, I definitely failed it. Yeah. But yeah, you wanna... Um, you wanna kind of have as perfect of movement as you can, essentially. Damn, it's hard to do slow down, dude, when I'm used to doing it and sped up. But yeah, I think you I think you get my point though. You just kind of uh, And then jump late on the last jump. And then once you do it good, you land on the other side like this. And sped up it looks basically like uh, not like that, because that was terrible. <laughs> now I'm used to the slowdown. But yeah, it looks sort of like this. That is the fastest way to do this, uh, where it's actually kind of viable. There is a way to do it without the railing, but I never really thought it was viable. I know some people do it, but... I can't stand it, and I'm not the right person to show that off. But yeah, this this method takes a lot of practice, and I can tell I'm very out of practice in it. But yeah, that is if you want to get a good time, that is what you're gonna have to do. Uh, for you have to do this trick essentially. The easy method though is just. Um, Okay, so the easy method is jump onto the switch. Again, as late as you can, it's very imprecise though in this case. Um, I missed it. It doesn't really matter. Then just aim up like this. Jump really late, like as the bridge is falling. And then you'll target the switch up there. Uh, I messed up my jump timing though. So, basically go like... Like this, aim up, and as the bridge is falling, you wanna jump and hold straight back, and then target the switch. Uh, and then if you do it properly, it'll look sort of like this. And then the cutscene will play and the uh, scourge things will fall down on the bridge. And then go up and trigger the bridge again. The key things to keep in mind here is to hold double back as soon as you jump. So you land back on the bridge. If not, you will either die or you'll land here, which is bad. You can't come back from this, essentially. No, I don't think you can go back up. Uh, the other thing is jump pretty late, a lot later than you'd think. And then shoot quite a lot later than you'd think as well to make it more consistent. So like this. No, not like that. But yeah, this one also takes practice, but far less so than the other method. Oh, if you mess up your timing, you'll hit the thing, uh, the, the roof there. But yeah, both take practice. The later one I showed is a lot easier, though. So yeah, when you get over here, you want to cut the corner by jumping on the pillar here and then jumping to the other sides. Pretty small time saver, but it adds up. 
Then do the same thing here, but shoot the gargoyle as you jump on the... Like, over the hole like that. If you shoot the gargoyle before, like, like this, you'll fall to your death, so don't do that. Shoot it while jumping, so like... Like that. And you'll be fine. Then just avoid the pixies as you go down here. Uh, they're a lot less scary if you don't care about them. I used to be terrified of them. Then just kind of follow along with where I'm going here. You don't want to go to any side rooms or anything. You just keep going and eventually you'll get to this... Um, Kind of hang out or chill out place or whatever for the Slytherins. Then go to the Where's right the side here. Uh, that guy's bad. Then here you'll get a cutscene. After the cutscene just hold back and you'll get another cutscene and you'll be Harry again. Then you want to just run back out as Harry. Just don't get caught by any Slytherins. It's really really easy. And don't worry, you have, don't have to go all the way back, you just have to bridge the door right there. So like, um, here. And then you're done with the Slytherin thing. If you get caught, you just get placed back where you started a series and you'll be fine. Just have to redo it. Then go back to this grand staircase, Hermione will conveniently show the way. Then do the same boost you did before, remember, middle of the staircase, uh... Oops. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just wait for this thing to go back down. Remember, jump at the middle of the staircase to about the middle of the platform, and then just pause and boost. So, like... Like that. Again, takes a little getting used to how high you have to boost, but it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Then it's the final spell learning of the game, and you definitely want to do this one, because it saves 18 seconds or so to do it, so yeah. I am just being lazy here and speeding it up instead, which you can't do. I uh, cannot do in a run. Alright. So Spongify is probably the easiest challenge of the bunch. Uh, all you do is run into this room, Spongify this thing, jump up, get the snipe there and your swag, if not just shoot the Spongify and uh, when you get into the next room. But yeah, when you get into the next room there's two strats. You can either just trigger the cutscene, walk to the edge of the platform and then jump, and you'll land into a long ledge grab like that. Or you can time a jump like... Uh, and then try to land on the edge from that. Which is a lot harder, but obviously faster. Like that. So all you need to do is get a long ledge grab there. You can do it with a medium as well, but it's... Uh, it's kind of dumber. Like you can do it with the... This is a medium. Just mash a lot and you'll get up to... You'll get to the right side here. Then just kind of edge your way towards where you want to go. But yeah, ideally you want to get a long ledge grab. Do an insta pause here, it's free. Just do it. Um, I just didn't boost enough there. Like that, just boost up, you'll be right in front of the star, enter the star and you're done with the challenge. There is nothing much to Spongebob anymore. It used to be a really cool challenge, but... Boosts, man. But yeah, follow the girl to Bean Bonus Room again, and... Then you follow Ron, or go to this part and then Ron will show up, and then you follow Ron. And don't worry, you will not have to use the stairs anymore, because you have Spongebob, and Spongebob is amazing. So yeah, once you get in here, after the cutscene, just jump over the railing and then sponge by this tile right here. These you can ignore. Uh, this one you want to sponge by though. And then jump on it and you'll go to the bathroom floor. Then just follow Ron to the bathroom.
This is a good time to check if there's a frog here. If they spawned a frog from the cauldron. It'll usually be around that part. You don't need to pick it up yet, but just keep in mind if it's there or not. And then there'll be a cutscene here. This cutscene is about a minute long and it is unskippable. So yeah. A very nice break actually in the run, because you don't really have many unskippable cutscenes. Come on now. In the box. But yeah, I'm not gonna actually watch this, so Alright, so after this, again, just follow Ron. There's a lot of following in this run. If you know where to go though, you'll mostly be ahead of the people, but at first you'll just be following them. So yeah, just follow Ron to the exit or look at where I'm moving, and you'll uh Get outside, Ron will have spawned outside magically, and you will follow Ron again to Haggard Sut this time. So yeah, basically now we're going to Forest, and this is the second to last part of the run. Uh, forest and Aragog is the second to last. The last being Chamber and Basilisk. Here you want to jump on Ron's head to just not be pushed by him because it's slightly faster. Alright, uh, oops. Alright, so what you want to do here is just run forward, single single right inputs, and then just Lumos this thing and run up the slope here. Get onto this thing. Don't, don't climb it like that, just walk onto it. Hit that sponge of a tile, not this one. And then run off onto it from from here, like like that. So like, like this, and then just hold forward, and you'll fall or get over the gap. If you need a or need health, this is a good frog to pick up right here. This is also a good time to keep in mind if you got one in the bathroom earlier. If you did, you don't need that frog. Generally speaking, you can just get the bathroom one because it's more convenient. Alright, so this thing here is a giant pain in the ass in runs where you want to go fast. If you try running past it, it'll own you. So, what you need to do is you need to try to hit the middle of it. Like that. If you hit any of the heads, what'll happen is... Of course I can't do it now. I always do it in runs. Like that. It'll just do that and then the other heads will turn towards you. So yeah, just try to hit the metal. Don't run too fast in, because it'll hit you before you hit it. And then don't run into it after you hit it either. Then when you get to this part, there is usually a bridge that falls down. And then you have to like climb back up here. You can skip all that nonsense by just jumping to the right here onto that thing. So like, before it falls, jump onto this thing. And then jump about there to get back up and then you skip the uh, trigger <coughs> so it'll look like like this not like that <coughs> not like that either well I'm bad today all right so like like this <laughs> I swear this is not a very hard trick you should definitely go for it in runs like that. Alright, so this next part, grab the save book if you want, it's fine. Uh, if you don't like spiders attacking you, you can just go through the web here. Uh, it does not have collision on the side here. And its spider will not attack you. If you want to go fast though, you just hit the web. And then just move past the spider, it's fine. Don't really care about that spider either. Then this bunch of tile, what you want to do is you want to bounce and then like adjust the bounce to land down there. So you want to go like this. Oh, don't get the pixie to hit you like that because yeah. So basically like like this. And then land down here. Then there's, you don't need to jump this gap, you can just walk over it like this. So yeah, shoot these two webs. Don't let the spiders out. Just shoot the, because they'll they'll attack you and it's annoying. So just shoot the webs. Continue on. Uh, when you get here, 
jump into this ledge at any point, really. Just jump into it with a medium or small ledge grab. Oh, I got a medium. Oops. Small ledge grab like that. Pause as soon as you can. Go into boost and then boost with both mouse and keyboard. And you should land up here. Sometimes you'll land on this web. That's also fine. Then you just jump up. Then just shoot this web. And then um, the sponge of tile here, there's a good timing to when to jump. Just do that. Like, turn the corner. And then jump as soon as you turn the corner. Then just shoot the tile in the air and you'll... You'll land right on the tile at the earliest point you can, which is good because then you'll be far away from the ledge when you land. And then you can jump onto it without a ledge grab. So it looked like this, essentially. Like that. And then here, you want to jump from this corner here into about the middle of this platform. And jump very late and a spell cast, uh, do a spell cast in the air. And you should skip the ledge grab. If you did it properly. If not, you'll get a small ledge grab, which is fine. It's less than a second lost, I'm pretty sure. Hit that spider twice. Hit each of these spiders once. You don't only need to hit them once to stun them. Alright, so this next room. I'm just gonna kill these guys, because they're annoying when explaining. But uh, you don't have to kill them in runs. Alright, so... There's two boosts you can do here. You want to regardless shoot this rope. Always shoot the rope. Um, so yeah, the, the harder boost, which is the fast one as well, is just climb this log at the right side like this. Make sure you don't get a slanted ledge grab like that, where it's like kind of diagonal. Make sure it's actually in line with the log. And then pause as Harry's right leg is on the top, or on top of the thing like this. And then just boost a couple of times, and you'll get through and land on top here. It's honestly not hard, and everyone should be doing it, but I know some people don't like it again. So yeah, just um, climb at the right side of the log. About when his right leg is on the thing, you wanna do a couple of boosts. I went a little early there, pushing my luck. Might be early. Yeah, just wait until you firmly see his leg is on there, and then just boost a few times. Well, that would have worked if I just boosted enough, but I didn't boost enough, because I'm bad. <laughs> boosted early. Alright, like that. <coughs> the easier boosting method is to come over to this rock, Get either a long or a medium ledge crab. I like long, just walk into it. Then pause, then do like two or three boosts, and you'll be up here. Then just jump onto the branch, uh, without a ledge crab of course, and then just walk down and you'll be in the same spot. Either boosting methods is, are, are fine, the first one I showed is a t bit faster though. It's a five seconds or so faster I think. After you do that, just shoot this web, walk along the slope here, and you won't take damage from the from the mushrooms. Hit the tree, and then just jump onto the tree, and... Once you get to a certain point of the tree, it'll start falling, so what you want to do is just run forward the entire time. About here, let go. And... Uh, you'll see I start, or keep sliding like that. Uh, after you start sliding, or like start falling, just uh, let go and then shoot the web and jump through here. You don't need to let go really either for... Uh, I just do it out of habit, I think. You can hold forward pretty far. And then just walk forward and you'll be at Aragog. So yeah, on this one, just hit this web to your left once. The web to your right ones, and then there's this interesting thing where you can hit a web twice by as you're running towards it, just mash, and you'll be able to get in two spells per web, like that. So that's the easy strats. Just basically this: hit the first two webs once, and then every other web after that twice. 
Um, and then of course I missed it. Hard strat though is to do this. Use a pause cast to hit that web and the next web three times. Like... Or hit that one twice and then hit this one three times. But yeah, you need to hit two webs three times and one web two times. So like that. It's pretty easy, but it takes time getting used to. <laughs> Alright, so for the actual Aragog fight... Oh god. Um, okay, so for the actual Aragog fight, what you want to do is just get close to him like this. Not too close, but just like about here. And you want to mash spells the entire time. One spell cast does one damage, unless he shows his belly, in which case he does 20. So just mash the entire entire time. And his attacks are based on a cycle. He'll first do a web shooting attack, which will either shoot to the left side, or it'll shoot directly towards you. This is the one that shoots to the left side. If you get that one, just stay stationary and it's fine. Then he's going to do a charge attack, which is what he just did there. He's going to smash the ground and then run towards you. After you smash the ground, just like he's going to smash the ground here. After he does that and charges, walk back like that and you'll be out of his way. And then he's going to do another web spitting attack. Which again, he shot to the left side. Shooting to the left side is faster because he shoots less webs. And just, he, he's gonna do another charge after that, then another web spitting, then another charge, and this alternate. And you'll get used to what the attack animation looks like. And then, yeah. Um, so yeah, if you, if he spits directly towards you, you want to walk to the right in a circular motion around him until he has spit three webs, and then stop. Because the fourth web will be will hit you if you keep going. So yeah, the, for avoiding webs, if he spits to the left, don't care. If he spits directly at you, avoid three and then stop, and the fourth one will miss by default. If or to avoid the uh, charge attack, all you have to do is, uh, as he starts charging, walk back, and he will not hit you, and then just walk back forward to set to uh, get in position again. Keep mashing the entire time. Aragog is a very easy fight once you understand his attack patterns. So then just follow Ron again and then use the spongy vitile here to go to the bathroom again, same as he did before. And then we're going into chamber which is the absolute last part of the run. So, after this cutscene skip, jump onto the right side uh, things, like uh, right side sink, and then walk onto the middle sink, like this. And then just hold forward, and as it starts going down, just jump and you'll get over it before it goes to fully down. After you spawn here, just hold double forward, double right for a little bit, and then let go of double right about here, and only hold single right. So, like this. You can hold double right the entire time, it's just a tiny bit slower. It's fine though. So you want to jump from this corner to that corner. You're not supposed to be able to do that, but you can do it pretty easily like that. And then we're going to use the Sponge Vitale to negate damage. Usually you take this elevator down, but uh, just hold forward a little bit to not land on it and then fall back down like that. Alright, so... <coughs> When you drop down here, you wanna... You don't need to care about any spiders. I like to shoot two of them though. I shoot that one and I shoot that one because they're annoying. But yeah, just fall down, go to the right and then... Uh, jump into a small ledge grab in this ledge. Don't shoot the skirt until you're up here though. 
and I'll tell you why in a second. So just shoot the two spiders, jump onto here, and once you're here, shoot the Scourge and immediately skip the cutscene and hold forward. Um, like that. You should bump into the thing. Then just Spongify and hold it back, and then just keep holding back. And you should go past these things without getting killed. Like that. It seems sketchy, but it's really not. I don't think I skipped a cutscene fast enough. You can also pause cast to make your jumps a little shorter, which is good. Okay, so once you get past here, there's a save book there and a frog there if you need it, but usually you won't. Just run to this side, you'll get an unskippable cutscene again. One of the few. Then after this, what you want to do is... Uh, this is kind of like a ramp shape, right? So you want to run along the left side, not too far up because you can't really stand there, but on this part here. <laughs> run along there, that, so you don't have to use the first step there, you can just jump straight onto the second step. Then onto the uh, third step and then down here. While doing that though, you want to target this and shoot that, so... So you want to do like this. And then get past it before it falls. If you climb at any point during this, you don't want to keep going. Then you just wait, like say... Oops, come on. Say I climbed on the third step like this, oops. I just wait, I do not proceed, because it's very. you can make it, but it's extremely difficult. And you don't want to kill your run there. So yeah, after you get around on this side of the thing, you want to be on the right side. And again, stand on the ramp, like taller part of the ramp here. Then you want to jump into the ledge here, in as far to the side as you can, and get a medium ledge grab, this one right here. And then just pause as soon as you can, and then just mash boosts. And you should get onto the side here. Uh, normally, what you'd have to do is you'd have to go... Like, tank a sponge of I and then go up and then down on the other side. <clears throat> so yeah, this just skips that and it's quite a bit faster. And definitely worth doing because it's easy. So yeah, then just run down here. Uh, grab the save book because this next part is kind of tricky. So... You want to walk to about this part here, where you see the two parts of the bridge connect. I'm just gonna get rid of these pixies. You would not kill these pixies or care about them in a run. They don't attack you immediately as you get into the room. Oops. And I'm gonna kill the crab as well, because he's annoying as well. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so... Once you get in here, just run straight over here and you'll see how the, there's like three pieces of this metal thing and they connect there and they connect here. You want to stand on where it connects at the first time and then stand kind of as far out as you can and then walk directly at the corner and you should get a medium ledge grab like that. And then just pause immediately and then boost a few times and you'll be up on the top part of this room and then... Uh, you can either walk around this thing, uh, but there's no point really to just not walk in in the middle. Remember though, if you do that, that you have to jump. Like... You can walk onto that first part here, but you have to jump off it here or else you'll fall down. Then just hit the rope and jump into the opening that the rope hit or uh, rope created. So, um, in an actual run, what that would most likely look like is something along these lines, where you go to here, uh, you go directly at the corner, boost up, get over, and then just shoot the rope and jump down. So yeah, that's first half of chamber. So yeah, the next room is very easy. All you do is come to this point right here, walk into it, get a long ledge grab, and then just do like three or four boosts, and you'll be up here. Then just walk off and land on here. 
Uh, you can get stuck there in softlock. It's very rare, though. Then just open this thing, and there's a pixie. You can avoid hitting it like I just did, did there if you're really fast. If not, just hit it and then sponge your up. And then just hit the two ropes and go down here. This is pretty straightforward, really, other than the boost, obviously. Then, for this part, um, you wouldn't kill or hit these snails, but for demonstration purposes, I will. There's these light things, and as soon as anything touches them, the wall opens. And you fall to your death. But what you can do is you can walk along the wall like this, and you'll fall down onto this invisible collision. Then just keep walking and either wait... Nice, never seen that before. Uh, either wait by the edge here until they go up like that, like... Like that, and then proceed. Or you can go with a ledge grab, which is a tiny bit faster. Like, just jump, jump and then hit left, and you'll get up to a ledge grab. Then just follow the whole way, and you'll get a Indiana Jones uh, stone chase, or boulder chase, or whatever. Just kind of walk along the left or right and middle sides. And you'll be fine. You don't have to jump to make the the clearings if you don't want to. Then when you get down here, uh, remember to turn around because you'll be facing the opposite direction. There's ingredients there for portions if you need it, but it's not needed really. Then just come in here, and there's two methods you can do this next room. You can either go in here like this, shoot the rope as you're on it, and then get a ledge grab here, oops. Because this wall is gonna kill you when it falls on you. Like that. Because they didn't want you to be able to go in the first time. So, what you can do is you can get, do a boost into a wall walk here. Like something along the lines of... Uh, that wasn't fast enough. I'm terrible at this strat because I really haven't practiced it. It was found after I stopped doing runs. But yeah, the general idea is the same as the one in Bicorn. You want to just um, be fast at boosting and you'll boost on here. Use arrow keys and mouse, evidently. It makes it a lot easier. And then just hit back and then forward and you'll land down here. The easy way to do that room, though, is just shoot the thing as soon as you see it. Like... Well, sort of like that. You can shoot it before the cutscene, but it really doesn't matter. Then just wait until they come back, and then... Jump in the door. Like that. Alright, so if you don't have a potion still from potion class, you want to make one here. And there's ingredients over there and a potion cauldron there. All you have to do is pick up one bark and one mucus and then run and hit the cauldron. And then you'll make a, um, you'll make a potion. You sh or ideally you want to just keep your potion from potion class though and then just proceed. Also, I forgot to mention it, but you, to avoid the fires here, just hold forward the entire time until you pass the first three. You won't get hit. The next three are a little bit more complicated, though. Basically, as soon as the first one shoots, just run. You will usually take damage, like I just did there, but it's fine. Alright, so the final boss of the run, and this is a hard one to get good at and get used to. But, okay, so first phase, I'll explain first phase and everything to do with first phase first. Um, essentially, you can, there's two attacks it can do. If you're close, it'll do this attack, which is a charge attack, and it does a, sh a, a ton of damage. Don't, don't trigger that attack. If you're far back, though, uh, about this far back, judging by the book, He'll spit poison at you, and that's the attack you want. So as soon as you trigger the first phase... 
Um, just move back. Just move back and charge your sword fully. And then hit it. And then you can kind of stun lock it if you time it properly. You'll see he's kind of like... Uh, I failed it there, but yeah, you can stunlock him. If if you don't manage that, just dodge the poison and and like keep hitting him. So just move back and then charge your uh, attacks, and then eventually you'll hit him down. The first phase is very simple, very easy. Okay, so second phase, move to this great or grin first. And the reason is, he'll have an animation for opening these things. And there's four four holes he can pop up of. He'll pop up of, up of the one he's closest, or you are closest to, unless he already just was in that hole. So I can't get him to be in this hole twice in a row. So just get here and then... Uh, try to aim for his head. Try to aim for his head. The neck does not do just or as much damage. Try to dodge your potion poison as much as possible. Um, if you get hit right after throwing a spell, you can insta throw the next spell, so that's kind of useful. But yeah, the fight is mostly just be used to how he attacks. Be good at dodging. So yeah, after you do the first round, you want to go come to this this one because it's far away from the first one so the poison spreads if you don't have enough damage look at a bar at the bottom here I did not do enough damage to three cycles so I'll just do a four cycle at that point I want to get him to get in out of this hole if I had enough damage and I knew I could beat him on the next cycle I would just go back to this hole here and the reason is you can only beat him in this hole, because they only made one animation for him dying, apparently. So yeah, yeah. That's also why you start doing this hole. Because if you do this hole, and then that hole, and then that hole again, there will only be two animations of him opening the holes up. Instead of three. Which is a couple of seconds faster. So yeah, you just gotta d judge if, uh... You did enough damage, and you feel comfortable enough to to do it in one more cycle. So yeah, I, I always go to this one on the second one, and then the one to my left if I don't or didn't do enough damage. Yeah, I didn't. I don't feel like I did enough damage there, so I'm gonna do a fourth cycle. So yeah, just keep dodging his attacks, keep trying to hit his head, and make sure you try to kill him in that hole and not any other, because no other hole will work. And then after you kill him, just skip the remaining cutscenes, and then finally follow Ron and Hermione into the Great Hole, and you'll be done with the run, and congratulations, you finished any percent of this game. Timer ends as soon as the fade out starts there. The cutscene here is not part of the run, and you can watch it or skip it or do whatever you want with it. So yeah, I I know I'm bad at explaining stuff, and I know this tutorial was very so-and-so and not very thought out. And I'm sorry if I didn't explain anything uh, to a acceptable uh, level or whatever. The if there's anything you're having troubles with at all, then feel free to either contact me through my comment section on this video or look me up on Twitch and ask me while I'm live. I'd be happy to answer either way. Uh, I'll leave my Twitch channel in the description. So yeah, if you um, if you did manage to finish any percent because of this tutorial, then feel free to tell me your times as well, because I'd be interested to see if someone actually used the tutorial. So yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching and all that.